2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. Perilous times. We're going to go 1 through 9. So here we are, chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. It says perilous times. There are a lot of different signs for that. Terrible times, awful times. Verse 1 says, 1 through 9 says, This know that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. For of this sort are they which crept into houses and led captive silly women laden with their sins, led away with diverse lust, ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as James and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest as unto all men as theirs also was. Well, let's pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for the time we can come before you tonight. We thank you for this men's retreat that we're here once again. I thank you for my being here several years ago and the preaching that encouraged our heart, the fellowship here. And now, this time we're together, Lord, we pray that you'll bless Brother Reggie, Brother Dwayne, and uh, this conference. We pray that you'll strengthen our faith. Help us, Lord, uh, the preaching of the word to be clear. We pray that you'll lead us. Use your word here tonight. Help us to put away the cares that are at home in different places, Lord. We pray that tonight we would focus on your word, that we would continue. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Here it says, perilous times shall come. That means they're here now. Yes, they are. It's not talking about just the future. The future's here. We need to wake up. This week, um, all the things that are going politically with in politics is there's lies going back and forth. Shame on them. They ought to be telling the, the truth. I'm telling the truth. No, they're lying. They're, you look back and forth. Look at all these different uh, things that are going on. Both Republicans and Democrats are at each other's throats. And look at the system of our government. Look at what's happening with our presidency. You look at videos and things that are going on and people say, no, 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 and they lie and they're deceiving and they don't care about the truth. They say, no, no, really, this is the truth, and it's not. Where are we? Have we come in America? Now, that's not my point, but realize that you and I, we're saved. We should not be following the same corruption that is in this world. Shame on us if we do. We're going down a little bit farther. It says, lovers of them own self. What I want, well, I don't feel like doing that. I want to do this. I want to stay home. I'm going to stay home and watch uh, a vlog and watch Brother Reggie preach. I'm not going to go to my church. Shame on us for thinking that way. Don't go with what you feel like, what is comfortable for you, what you want. This, these verses go through a whole long list of sins. What's happening today? People rebellious to their parents. As I travel as a missionary and I visit a lot of different churches, I see many pastors who love the Lord, who are doing right. I talk with them. And they said, I taught my son, and today he's gone astray. Yeah. It grieves people's hearts. They try to have fellowship, try to have the, uh, the, the devotions, and now they've turned against God. They're, they're rebellion, rebelling against their parents. What's happening? It seems like this has become normal now. 
it's worse than ever today. The rebellious spirit, rebelliousness against parents, could be the internet influence, influencing the children's minds. They don't know, I, they don't care. I don't know what it is, but the truth is that it's there today. Children just don't care what their parents say. I say, but your father and mother, they're Christians. They're, they're missionaries, but these kids turn away. What are we to do? It's sad. People blame their parents more than ever. Good Christian parents, but the children rebel and blame their parents for things. What's the future going to look like? It says unthankful. I remember a long time ago when I got saved, and I got in church, I started learning, and there was an interpreter. I had, there was a, a man named Fred that was teaching. He said, now look, you, th you thank the interpreters. You tell them thank you for what they're doing. They're doing a good job. They're working. So we'd go up and say thank you to our interpreters. And we'd, we'd get, take, get a ride to church. We'd say thank you. And if we missed saying thank you, we were scolded for that by a deaf man. And today, people are, they're not thankful. They say, oh, look at these interpreters. Oh, they're lousy interpreters. They're tired. Who do they think they are? Look, we got to be thankful for our interpreters. Look at this man over here. People say, oh, look at him. He can't sign. You know, and forget. Look, we need to be thankful for somebody here serving the Lord, preaching and teaching. We need to thank him. Don't just say, well, he's, I want to go somewhere where I can get some really skilled signing. His church is boring. Where's our thankfulness today? It's gotten worse and worse and worse. You can go down this whole long list. It says unholy. Unholy. People not caring about holiness. People say, well, I feel comfortable. I feel like I'm doing okay. I've got things under control myself. You know the G, L, B, Q, T, L, A, B, A, B, C, D, whatever, through Z? You know that. You can, all these letters are being added to that long list. Look, now don't misunderstand. We love people. We, we love the Lord and we want to help, these pe help people. But we, we need to realize that the, the, they, they, people are unholy today. We need to support people. There's, there are different causes that are being supported, and, uh, and there we, we people can have a new life. But look, when they, I'm, we need to tell what is right. We need to speak what is right and not give in to the pressures of this culture. We need to say what the Word of God says. If God says something is not holy and not right, we need to declare that. I have friends, people say that, that my family is this way or that, and we need to focus on what the Word of God says. We don't, if, if somebody asks, if we, we have the chance to declare right and wrong, we need to declare what's right. I have to support what God says more than supporting a cause today. There's some terrible things going on in the world, and this list keeps going on and on and on. It says false accusers, <coughs> fake news, CNN, all the stuff that's going on. You see things on Facebook as Christians. People are making things up and putting things out there, and it goes on and on and on. I look at that and say, wow, can I, I can't believe what's going on and what they're doing in churches. And these people are Christians. Be careful of your testimony, men. Facebook can be a great tool for family, for missions, uh, asking people to pray for us. You have a, we have thousands of people that follow us on Facebook, and, and they say they pray for us, and that's wonderful, and that's a great thing. But don't just get out and, and bury your, all your trash on the internet. Be careful. You say, well, I don't care. I can insult anybody I want to. and Just, no. False accusers. You say, oh, I'm against this person or I'm against that person. Look, I disagree with Rempel or I disagree with these other people. Look, don't put it on Facebook. 
you have a pro problem with Brother Rimple, go to Brother Rimple and say, look, I got a problem. Let's sit down and talk it out. Talk straight to his face. Right. You have a problem with Fred Adams, meet him and talk to him. If you can't solve it, don't go out telling everybody else about it. You have a problem with me, come to me. Don't go telling everybody else. <laughs> Gossiping. False accusers. Lies that are spread. Be careful with your testimony. What you put in email, what you put on Facebook. Think like a Christian. Act like a Christian. Do like a Christian. Follow the Word of God. Do what's right to people. Spread the gospel. Help people be saved. That's our responsibility. Don't be a false accuser. I'm a missionary. I moved to Germany uh, and was there for a year. And uh, my wife and friend, um, <coughs> let's see, someone else got married and then got involved in, um, wanted to help in the wedding. So three of us, my wife and my daughter, and um, we couldn't go. So they, so they had to stay in a um, couple of weeks. And I came back. The next May, we, my wife got on the phone and said, a friend, the other missionary three hours west said, oh, hello, Trish? She said, yeah, yeah, I'm Trish. What, 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 what you know? And, oh, okay, um, I went to a ladies' Bible meeting last night. And someone raised their hand and asked to pray for John Olson that y'all were getting a divorce and mm -hmm. that he had taken the kids and lug on. It's like, what, what? <laughs> really, you heard that? It couldn't be. No. And someone should stand up and say, no, that's not true. And we looked at that and said, I wonder how they got that idea. <laughs> <laughs> we ought to give, say, Pastor, who told you, who told you this? Who said this? And we ought to um, maybe talk to them and ask, trace it back and say, who told you? And then the other, the other person, who told you? Who, we still have the email from the pastor. Who said this? Who said this? Who said, and if we trace it all back, Go back to the person that first said it, and they would say, well, I'm sorry. Somebody else told me, but I, I put it out there, and I didn't confront you originally. So, yeah, 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 okay. Who told you? And then this other person. And uh, there's somebody else in my town, a missionary, other mission, another missionary put this out and told him, and then it went around like that. It's like, what? Why didn't they just come over to my house? We're in the same town. They We'd known them for a long time. So I went over to their house and said, hey, hey, come on in, come on in, come on in. They said, you know, so... I said, I have a question for you, okay? Let me ask you. The Bible first, does the apply the deaf or hearing? Is the deaf or hearing are separate or the same? Or the same from the Bible point of view, yeah, yeah. Okay, and the, so the Bible talks about if we have a problem with our brother, he's supposed to meet that person, right? I'm deaf, you can't communicate me with, oh, they said, well, we signed, we talked a little bit, okay, so. All right, I'm gonna talk directly to you, and I told this story. My wife got this phone call from a lady <coughs> about me and her that we got a divorce. And then that lady got the phone call from someone else, and they got the phone call from someone else, from the pastor, and then it went back over there, and then the other state, and, the, and then the other city, and then, and, the, and then they told me that it called, it came back from you. You were the originator of that. And I said, well, I'm so sorry. No, no, I was wrong. I was wrong. But uh, you know, then they said, well, you shouldn't have gone without your wife. And I said, why didn't you come to me? You spread false lies, false stories about her divorce. We're not getting divorced. <coughs> False accusers. Stories get blown out of proportion. That's what I'm saying. Pray for a person if you, if you have uh, something. Don't spread news. Don't tell things on Facebook. Today, with Facebook, everything spreads very fast. People accuse and they blame. Right. Having a form of godliness, it says, but denying the power thereof. People look like Christians. They can be even good, strong preachers, but they don't have the power of the Holy Spirit. Someone comes up and says, I've learned the Word of God. You're wrong. Said, and they try to tell me. I said, where did you get that out of the verse? What did you say? Well, I know. You know. You know. I said, no, 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 no. You're not reading the Bible. What do you mean? I said, look at, you're, you're watching vlogs. You're watching it on the Internet. I said, what are you watching on the Internet? And they go, uh, well, I don't know uh, that person. They told me the name. I said, come on, tell me the name. And that person was 
it says it's very clear and you're, you're not very clear. But anyway, so I, we go and we look at the, the, the uh, <laughs> vlog and find out, oh look, that thing is rid, riddled with mistakes, scriptural error. And so I went back over and I said, look, <laughs> that, that verse is not what you think. And it, it, what that man was preaching with, didn't agree with the word. And I said, oh, but he's a godly preacher. He's friendly. He has all this fluff, but he's false. Right. No power. But this type of stuff spreads and people take it in. Uh, from Deaf Missions, there's a lot of drama involved in that, but listen, the doctrine is not right. You need to be careful. If you look, uh, look about their, their statement of faith, it talks about salvation, church membership, and uh, salvation being the same thing. And I'm saying, don't, no, look, you need to be careful about deafmissions.com. Be careful about all of that. Be, don't follow these places that don't have the truth. Don't, they intermingle, intermingle salvation with false doctrine. That'll destroy people. But they look like Christians. They look like they're following the Lord. But look, there's no power in that. It's destroying our churches, destroying Christianity today. In verse 7, ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You know, with the Internet today, people are learning so much, but their lives are not changed. Oh, my. There's so much knowledge out there. It's a great thing to have knowledge about science, about the, about the physical things, about the body, about the things we can learn. But hearts are not changed. They understand nothing of the truth. That's our day to day. Perilous times that we live in today. Wake up with all this negativity around us. Wake up. Every one of us lives in this situation. We have to confront this daily. You can't hide yourself. You can't view the world through rose-colored glasses and say, I love everybody. <laughs> yeah, there's Olstein and all that stuff and out there, oh, God wants you to be happy. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Uh, but the Bible says perilous times. Also look in 2 Timothy. Yeah. Verses 10 through 13. 2 Timothy 3, 10 through 13. Chapter 3, verses 10 through 13. Talk about faith in verse 10. It says, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. I'm going to stop right there for a second. Paul is explaining to Timothy, he said, you look at me, you've seen my example, you've seen what I have done, look at me, follow my example. That's what he's saying here. I thank the Lord in the midst of these perilous times, we still have people who are willing to stand and continue today. I have two people that really influenced my life. One was John Barr. I was saved in 1979 at Palm Springs Drive Baptist Church. John Barr was there. He was older than me. I was 13. I think he was 17 or 18, whatever, and learning sign language, and I was watching him. And then he went off to Bible College, BJU, and uh, then came back and and, and from college he learned and he began to, he was involved in music before and then in summer he would interpret. He graduated, 
before he graduated, he said something's wrong. Deaf, 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 deaf. <laughs> and so he's not, he's not deaf anyway, but he graduated anyway. He became, he became, became a pastor to the deaf. <coughs> he came back to my home church and became my pastor. In 1981, he preached the word of God to the deaf. His wife didn't know any sign language at all. She was so shy. And the deaf were saying, oh, goody, goody, goody. We're gonna, we're, here's some, we, got, we got new flesh here. And we, and we threw all this stuff at her. And he preached and preached and preached. And I remember, I to, he said, I want to continue till I die. We're not going to get divorced. I told my wife, if, if, if you want to get divorced, you're going to kill me, right? She said, you got to kill me. I don't want to get divorced and never divorce. And, and you know, and so that's what he said. And I watched his example. And he stayed for a long time, or a short time there, and then he started traveling in deaf ministry. And now, 1979 to now, I watch 42 years for the Lord. He's been an example to me. Praise the Lord for that example. That's one example. There was a second example, Brother Reggie Rimple. I went to camp at the Bill Rice Ranch in 1979. I sat there, and the teacher was Reggie Rimple. I didn't know who he was. Graduated, and what, when did you graduate? Well, okay, so he got up, and he started explaining things. I was 14. The year I got saved, and... and um, He said, how will they hear without a preacher in Romans chapter 10? Oh. They're going to go to hell. And I thought, what? No. I said, the deaf can't hear. They hear through their eyes. They can't hear with their ears, but they can hear through their eyes. And he, oh, he preached, and he jumped all over the place. And I was going, whoa, ho, ho. I thought, maybe he was going to do a karate chop on me or something. I, he was really all over the place. But that got, my heart became, fell under conviction from his preaching. I don't know about anybody else, but I said, spreading the gospel. It began to bother me that day and that night. I could not sleep. God had his finger in my face. I got up in the morning, and I, I so didn't know what to do. I saw Brother Rempel walking, going to chapel or something, and I, I said, hey, hey, and he said, I was 14. He's 24 or something at the time, and I said, I said, last night, couldn't sleep. He said, oh, I'm sorry, are you sick? He said, no, 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 I couldn't sleep, no, but I was, something was bothering me last night. What, what's bothering you, he said. He said, you taught, you know, you're, I didn't know science too well at the time, so I was trying to explain. I said, you taught yesterday, preach, deaf. Uh, he said, oh, I know, I know, I talked about kneel. You need to get down in your, own, you need to get down right now and kneel and surrender to the Lord. I was 14 year old teenager. I didn't know what to do. I was just like, okay, uh, and I got down like this. He said, come here, come here, sit down. I went, okay. And we, we, pre we, we preached a prayer almost, and, and then others were just watching us, I'm sure. And he said, now you pray. And, I, and so, I, so I, 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 uh, I, I, I began to, uh, what, do, what do I, I said, Lord, uh, you can have me. Amen, amen, amen. He said, amen, amen. I said, amen. Okay. <laughs> What did I say? <laughs> I don't know what I said, but anyway, he said, "Amen, good. Your church? Where's your church?" He said, "Let's go. Let's go find the people from your church." He found the interpreter at that time. It was Richard Tesh and Robin Tesh. They were our interpreters, and um, and so um, he went and said, "You're going to go to that church, and you're going to keep going to that church, and you're going to help and serve the Lord at that church." And God has future plans for you. And I went, "Okay, okay." <laughs> And 41 years later, look at that. Look at, look, look at him. And he has been an example to me all these years. Perilous times shall come, but we need to be faithful, stubborn as it were, serving the Lord. Look at John Barr. Look at Reggie Rimple. I never thought that he would become president of Silo Word Ministries. No, not because he's an awful person, but this is of the Lord. Brother Rimple, look. But what, look what he's doing. I, you know, I couldn't sign. Look at God's using him. Look at, and, and God's blessing him and the college and the ministry there and spreading the gospel around the world. How awesome it is. And we need to be an example to other people as well. I'm going to add a little bit here. There's, a, there's something to add when it, this word persecution. 
verse 13, it says, Yea, all that live godly in Christ Jesus, verse 12, shall suffer persecution, but men shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now in 2020, you know, things are, people are going up and down. They're, they're not consistent. Things are getting worse and worse and worse, and they will get worse. Marriage and the family is being destroyed everywhere. Churches are changing everything about themselves. Now look, I realize God is still blessing churches. There are still some faithful people out there. In 1982, when I began visiting in churches and going around, there were so many churches. Today, in 20, 2017, I started uh, going to churches and I saw all these churches and said, look at, look at the change of the churches. I was here before and now look at the change in this church. And churches have gotten smaller and smaller. There are few churches that God is still blessing and still fa staying faithful and still doing a lot of things. But overall, our generation has become wicked. It's getting worse. Things are getting, uh, they're downsizing. The devil's at work here. And I thank God for good pastors who, but before pastors would say, oh, look at you serving the Lord. And today they're so uh, in your face. They're so, they're so, uh, disruptive and things are getting worse and worse all the time. People are accusing one, one another. You see, and politically there's a fight going on. Uh, there's a fight about religious freedom. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. Things are getting worse and worse in this regard all over the place. We need to give to missions, support missions. I talk to pastors and they said, oh, yeah, I remember you came back before here. You know, your, your church was good. I said, how are you doing? And, they, and the pastor will say, well, before we were really giving the missions $500,000 or $100,000 or something. We gave a lot, but, but now, no. I said, we don't do missions anymore. We have a missions emphasis Sunday. That's all we really do for missions. We don't have a missions conference or missions week. I said, oh, missions emphasis uh, Sunday, did that help your church? He said, no, things have really gone down. The support for missionaries is down. Mission boards is down. I'm going, what? And back, there used to be a real fervor. There were, uh, yeah, but we'd get, back in the day, we'd get like three or four churches a month supporting us. $75 or so. And um, some would give 100 and different amounts. Today, I have 39 churches supporting me. The average support is about $47 a month. It's, it, now, it used to be a lot more than that. Percentage-wise, it's a lot more, too. It, it's fallen off greatly. Support for missions. It's hard today for missionaries. You get involved in serving the Lord, you're going to confront the cruelness of this world. You think it'll never happen to me. You think it'll never happen to my pastor. Mm -hmm. But people will think, what's wrong with you? You're serving God, you're going to face persecution. What are we to do? Well, the perilous times and the persecution's coming, but, but look at this. Second Timothy three fourteen through seventeen. It says, "But continue thou in the things. But continue thou in the things. Thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise through salvation." Uh, unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. 
All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect or mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The word continue. Here it is. Continue in what you have learned. You and I have learned so much over the years. I've learned so much from, from Brother Barr and other, uh, we've learned so many different things and we've been taught. And today, you're learning. Remember what you've learned. Let that be the prayer of your heart and continue in those things. There are many pastors and Sunday school teachers and Christians, strong Christians, and today, well, They've quit church. They've become atheists. What? You think that'll never happen to you? What, are you proud or something? Be careful. Be careful. Pay attention to the Word of God. Keep your connection with the Lord. Pay attention to Him and continue, continue, continue. You say, oh, that'll never happen to me. I'm strong. Look, you're, you live in the flesh. Follow the Word of God. It'll help you. It'll keep you continuing in the things that you've learned. Many people have taught you. Brother Fred Adams have taught, taught over the years. And you know Fred Adams? Yeah, I say, yeah, you know Fred Adams? And I taught meet people, and they know him. And, and, and he, he's had an influence on about everybody in America, I think, you know. Just all the people. He's been a good preacher over the years and faithful. Learn from him. Well, continue in the things you've learned. Don't just throw the things that you've learned away. Don't dismiss. Don't, there's no excuse for, 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 uh, for not continuing because you know. Preach. The preaching has been good. You've learned. You remember those things. I remember when I went to the Bill Rice Ranch in 1978 and 79. They gave me a discipleship lesson there. And number one, I filled it out, sent it back in, gave me two. Filled it out, sent it back in, three, and I learned and learned. And all these years, I remember those things that I learned through the Bill Rice Ranch. I'm preaching today. It's our responsibility to continue, to continue for the Lord. Paul told Timothy, you remember the things that you've learned through the faith in Jesus Christ. Timothy goes, uh-huh, yep, yep. Even from his mother, even from passed down from generations, you and I need to remember that how we were saved through Jesus Christ. Maybe you forgot who witnessed to you and all that. Well, you forget, you forget, you forget. I remember in 78 when I went to church, my friend visited my house at the church. We went, he came into the room at 6. Palm Springs Drive, uh, uh, they, they began to explain the Word of God in the lesson. I raised my hand. I said, all of them raise your hand. And they, they began to teach me the Bible. And I began to learn. And uh, I was lost at the time, but they were teaching me. I said, yeah, I'm saved. But I didn't know anything about receiving Christ as my Savior. And I'd raise my hand as being saved, and they'd look around. They'd say, ah, he doesn't understand. I, it, yeah, I didn't get it. It was going past me, but I wanted to be involved. And so I stayed in that class, and afterwards, you know, I was oral. I, I didn't know sign language at the time. I read lips, and I had to use pictures and words. And, and I remember Fred, uh, he, he began to teach me and show me pictures and words and everything. He gave me a tract. This was your life, a chick track. And I began to look through that chick track. And I understood. He explained those pictures. All the stuff that he had said before came back to me as I read that track. And he, I started mouthing and trying to get the answers he said, go ahead and read it. And so I, I, I read it, and I prayed the prayer at the end of that tract, and I got saved. And then uh, I was saved on February the 5th, and, and that was just how I got saved. And I'm saved forever. Maybe you say, well, I go to church. Church can't save you. Oh, I've been baptized. Don't misunderstand. Baptism can't save you. 
try to live a good life. That's not going to save you. Only by faith in Jesus Christ can you be saved. Come to the men's retreat. Men's retreat can't save you. You need to have a personal time when you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. <coughs> we need to remember our salvation. And we need to give out the Word of God. This is the Word of God. The King James Bible here, the Word of God. Def love to watch vlogs, watch, watch people telling stories online. Look, this is the Word of God. Read this book. Learn this book. It's hard, I know. My Sunday school teacher, Fred, uh, he had quit school. He joined uh, another school. We was 12. There was, uh, they were put in a special school, and he began to learn 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. He quit school. Six years of school. He didn't have a good education. He worked a job. He be, uh, got saved. He joined the church. Uh, pastor said, you teach the deaf. And Fred went, uh, I've got a sixth grade education. I, ain't, I, I don't have this. He said, you teach the deaf. He said, okay. He didn't understand the words. They all went just right by him. He said, get a dictionary. So he'd take all day. He'd look at those words. He'd find out what the words meant. He'd study on his own, individual study, finding the words in the Bible, what they meant. Then the study, he'd stand up and he'd teach. He was so nervous. He was shaking. He'd teach and teach and teach. And I'd go in and I'd learn a lot from him. Sixth grade education. He taught me a lot for the Lord. It's good. <coughs> You and I need to continue in the Word of God. Salvation to your family, to your church, in the Word of God. You know the verse that, um, there's a key word in this particular verse I'm sharing. It's, uh, be faithful so much the more as you see the day approaching. More than ever we need to be faithful to the Lord. People in America, they say, oh, I'm not going to go to church at night. I'm not going to church on Wednesday night. No, Sunday morning, that's all I need. Jesus said, be faithful even more so. Gather together. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Don't let off on Sunday night and Wednesday night. Oh, they've got the children's club. They've got those things. Yeah, I know, but where's the preaching? People are not having services. Churches are not having services. You and I need to be faithful to our local church. Don't go to church on the internet. Go to your local church. If you can't, if, if you can't, if you have to go without an interpreter, go to church. If you, you move over to where, uh, move to Trenton, Georgia, move to uh, where Fred Adams Church is, go find a church. Say, well, I don't need a church. I'm just going to stay home. I'm just going to sit down and watch the, the uh, services online myself. Look, you'll never be a successful Christian staying home. It doesn't work. Amen. Go to church. Be faithful. Continue. All these churches are getting down to just a few people. But listen, let me tell you, go to church. If we don't go to church, if we don't serve the Lord through our church, we can't, people will not be saved. We need to be faithful. We need to continue so we can see the Word of God spread. Mm -hmm. Here in the Bible it says continue. Continue with salvation. Continue with your family. Continue in church. Your churches have programs, soul winning programs, discipleship programs, couples programs. Uh, Lead a person to Christ, learn how to lead a person to Christ, learn how to teach people. Win them and teach them both. You witness to a person, get them saved, say, oh, yes, praise the Lord, they're saved. Now, what are you going to do? Um, you're a new person in Christ. You become a new creature. Now, what do you do after you're saved? Go to church. Read the Bible. Pray. Follow, follow, follow. And then get people to come and, and help this person. You can't force a person to grow, but we can pray and we can be responsible to teach them and help them. 
it's their decision ultimately, but be soul winners and then disciple people. <coughs> be faithful. Today, all this technology, we throw out the Bible way. Matthew 28, 19, 20 is still in the book. Still right there. It hadn't changed. And we need to follow it. Some of you need to make a decision that you're going to be an example. Others are following you. Brother Scott Crabtree, I've watched him as a missionary. I've been involved, been to his church. Brother Fred Adams, uh, Brother Reggie, and some of you, I don't know all of you, but follow the scriptures. Don't let the world discourage you. Things are getting worse in the world. Okay, yeah, yeah, but... Focus on the Word of God. Focus on Jesus. And continue, continue, continue. Because He's coming soon. And we're going to be in heaven. We're going to stand before Him. And we want to see that well done, thou good and faithful servant. Yes! Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for your word. These verses tonight, we see that there are perilous times. They're coming. We see the things that are happening in this day and age in 2020. Lord, it could get discouraging, but help us to be faithful, to put our, our heads down and push forward. Thank you for the examples of Brother John Barr and Reggie Rimple and the others here mm -hmm. that have been faithful and shown me a good example. Help us to make a decision to learn to be faithful and to continue to be say, uh, continue our salvation in the Word of God and the families and discipleship and teaching people the Word of God. Lord, help us to share your Word. And Lord, if there's somebody here today that's not saved, touch their heart. Help them to be saved. Lord, help them to understand what it means to have Christ. We'll give you all the glory.